Hey guys, welcome back to the Frankie Fix channel. I appreciate you guys watching and thanks to all the new subscribers and the current subscribers. Uh, today we have this Toro CCR 2500E and with winter coming upon us here in the north, we got to get these things ready. Um, this one was donated by Brian Hines. He's been a big contributor to the channel. So thanks Brian. Let's give him a round of applause. Uh, he's been a big contributor. Uh, I don't know if you saw the the lawnmower with the bees inside of it. He contributed that one. And uh, so it's greatly appreciated. Uh, and you can contribute too by just liking the video and subscribing to the channel. So what are we going to do with this today? Well, it's a CCR 2500E, 5 horsepower, 2 cycle engine, so you do have to mix the oil with the gas. These are really good machines. They're ground contact machines where the paddle will rub and clean the snow right off the ground, uh, right down to the ground. Uh, it is a single stage, which means there's a paddle and it just grabs the snow and throws it through the chute. Uh, unlike the two stages, which have an impeller in there. Um, some of these came with uh, Suzuki engines, some of them with Briggs and Stratton engines. This one has a Tecumseh engine. As you can see over here, we have the ignition switch, the kill switch, metal keys, those are nice, primer bulb, we have the uh, pull rope, and we have the electric start. Now this one is an E model, so it does have the electric start, um, but they're good running machines, uh, it's in pretty good shape here, but we're going to go through it all. Um, we're going to start by taking the cover off getting a look at the motor um, we're gonna go through the spark uh, this hasn't ran in a while it's been quite a while since it's been running and it doesn't run now so we're gonna go through everything with it so stick around on the channel and uh, with all that being said let's get involved Okay, so the first thing we're going to have to do to get to the engine in here is take all this cover off here. And we have three screws right here, or bolts, and we're going to remove them at the 5 16 deep well socket. And then the plastic piece here attaches right under here. There's one bolt that goes through the handle into there, and then on the other side you have another one. So we're going to remove those and then we're going to have to remove the chute there. There's three bolts there and those are carriage bolts. They're kind of a pain. They can uh, rust sometimes and they just spin. And sometimes you got to cut them off. You can see one of them there, but that's what we have to take off in order to take this piece off. So uh, we're going to start working on that. 5 sixteenths. We'll clean all these up on the wire wheel. We'll clean them up. They'll look like new when we're done. And you're going to have this piece under here. And this is attached, like I said, with a 10 millimeter on the uh, handle. So we're going to get to that now. So since we have it tipped in the service position, let's take a look at the model number. It's 38425. And this probably would have been from 1998-99, maybe 2000. So it's quite a bit old, but it's in pretty decent shape. Uh, but we'll get it to where it needs to be. This pull rope is attached here. Um, it's not a big deal. You can kind of 
bring it around the handle like that. And we'll unhook this choke mechanism here from the carburetor. There's our choke. It's just simply a rod that goes into the uh, carburetor uh, choke linkage. Very simple there. So we don't want to damage this. So I'm just going to kind of turn it and bring it through the handle down here. There's that part there. And there we have our engine. The spark plug and this is a Tecumseh HSK850. Now this happens to be the same engine that they uh, put in the original snapper. Uh, and I do have a video on that that just hasn't been uh, edited yet, but it's the identical engine to uh, to the Snapper uh, SX5200. And we have some wires here for the key, and that'll just unplug if I wanted to uh, remove this whole thing. What I would do is probably just cut the cable here. For the pull or the pull rope and just put another a new knot on it you're not removing that much you're just removing a tiny bit of it um, now with the snapper I removed the entire engine and did the you know the complete overhaul on it because it had a, a lot of oil on the bottom this doesn't look too bad uh, we have our gas tank over here so let's continue by removing the top cover here and you are going to have to remove the gas cap to do that and then we'll go ahead and start uh, removing the bolts on the chute all right so here I'm just using a 13 millimeter wrench here and like I said sometimes these are stripped because they are carriage bolts and they kind of have that square uh, head to it that fits into the square on the metal this is a metal chute uh, this is an identical chute to they use Toro use these on many of their even the two stage models. Uh, I have a 521 and a 622. You know, any one of those, it's the exact same chute. It's just a different uh, handle here. So I'm just gonna loosen these up because I want to go through this uh, thoroughly because it hasn't been used in a while and it's probably going to be some painting that we're going to need to do. That one's like it's seized on there. We're going to have to figure something out with that one. But let me uh, continue by taking these other ones off. One on the back and one on each side, just three of them. I'm probably gonna have to get something to tap on these to pop them out. something to tap on these so I can tap them out. The reason is because this is metal and it's fused to the the head of these are fused to the metal. Probably hasn't been removed in a long time. Not a big deal. Let's, uh, let's get to it. All right so I'm just using a rubber mallet and just a socket extension. I'm just going to put it on the end of the bolt and give it a whack.
All right, so there's our chute. I'm probably gonna be painting this like I did the other ones. Just get the wire wheel on there, give it a nice paint job, clean it up. It's not too bad, there's some loose rust here. That's expected. And then of course the uh, mechanism where you uh, turn the uh, chute, which is plastic. All right, we should be ready to remove. We have a Phillips head bolt here and one on the other side. And hopefully that's all we gotta do here and this should come off. All right, I'm just taking a vice grips and I've put them on the handle of the screwdriver. It has a fairly big uh, Phillips head on here. And sometimes they're rusty and this helps but you want to do it very slow and then tighten it again then loosen it kind of work it a little bit now, I did put some uh, penetrating fluid on it as well so we'll get this other one here Now I do like these uh, two cycle, of course they don't make them anymore, but they kind of sound like dirt bikes. And they are powerful engines, it's just because of EPA standards they pretty much eliminated them. So these ones would be uh, top of the line when they were uh, brand new. I'm going to finish that off with just by hand, unhook the vice grips. something spinning there because that's turning but it's not uh, looks like we got a uh, nut under there we're gonna have to I didn't even see that originally but there's a nut under there we're gonna have to put a wrench on so we can turn this all right we got the one side off I just used a 716 socket underneath on the nut and uh, held it with the uh, Phillips head screwdriver so I'm just going to get the other side here Pretty much two washers. You have a washer on the top, and then a washer on the bottom, and of course the uh, nut. So now, I remove the top. All right, so looking inside here, we have the starter. You can see the electric start. You see the Bendix over here. So we're definitely going to try the electric start out. That's Tecumseh. And we have the muffler here. Here we have the label for the motor. Tecumseh. There's another view with the electric start, the Bendix, that will move hopefully and catch on to the flywheel. We 
it's moving here it's not seized up so that's a good sign we got a spring here of course our gas tank and there is some uh, gas in there so we're going to be draining that so I'm going to get this up on the table it'll just be a little bit easier to address some of these things and, uh, and then we can go from there all right so I'm just going to unhook the switch wire here for the key and we're probably going to remove this primer bulb hose here but what we're going to do is drain this gas out of here but I'm going to just uh, leave this on for now but I think what I'm going to do is eventually cut this off because I want to remove this entire thing it's just it's just in the way you know all right so I'm just going to cut this primer line it's long enough I got plenty of primer line if I cut some of it off so I'm just gonna cut it off here this way I can move this off to the side because it's just in the way of everything here now I can move this over to here Now we have clear access here to the carburetor and we're going to take this clamp here and slide it down and what I like to do is turn this just like this first before I start ripping away because sometimes what will happen is this part seized on there and you'll tear the, the fuel line. This doesn't seem bad. We have the fuel filter here. It's not super stiff. So that line seems good. We've got a can here. One of these kidney bean cans. Very handy to have. I have a whole bunch of them. And I'm just going to work this back and forth until it's turning back and forth. And now I can try to pull it out if you can't get it out I usually just take a screwdriver so let me get a screwdriver try to stick it in on the end here you could work it out that way probably hasn't been taken off in a very long time so it's understandable so there we go we're draining it out here and we'll let that totally drain and then we're going to uh, remove the carburetor clean that up and we'll check for spark and then we'll try the electric start and see if that's functioning properly Alright, so I'm still waiting for it to drain here. It wasn't that much gas in it, but this too proves that the fuel line is functioning properly there, that it's allowing fuel to go through the line uh, and that the filter isn't clogged. So that's one less thing I have to worry about. Alright, so our next order of business here, we're going to have to take this carburetor off, get a look at it and clean it. Gas tanks have uh, been drained, so we're all set there. Um, so I'm just going to take an Allen wrench and I've just cut an Allen wrench so it would fit in here. It's a little awkward because you can't, it's hard to get a straight, you know, Allen wrench in there. So I'm going to just use what I have here and start taking off the uh, Allen bolts here. and see what kind of shape this carburetor is in. Being that it's been sitting for a long time, it's a good idea to go through it all. So they're not, they're not too long. Wasn't too much effort there. There's one of them there. You 
you can kind of fit it at an angle, but I find the best way is just to cut a, just, I just took it on the grinder and grinded down the Allen wrench so it wasn't as long on the tip of it there. But use what you have. Whatever tools you have, it's going to get the job done. Now it's going to be a little bit oily, that's expected because it is a oil and gas mixture. Uh, but we're going to unhook this governor linkage here. I'm just going to tilt it and remove the spring and the governor linkage. And there we have the carburetor. So we're going to go ahead and take this bowl off and see what we're dealing with inside of here. And we'll clean it all up. All right, so we can see all the oily gas mixture here leaking out of it. Gaskets look like they're in good shape. You can always recognize a Tecumseh carburetor because they always stamp the name. They always stamp it, Tecumseh products on the bottom. So I'm just going to use a 7 16th socket and let's see what shape this uh, bowl is in here and hopefully the gasket isn't in bad shape actually it's not too bad you can see the bowl there's no uh, debris on the bottom of it have our float here that jet in there doesn't appear to be removable unless it's I see threads in there typically they'll have a jet in there and an emulsion tube so it has the brass float sometimes these tend to fill up with uh, gas and they don't work properly but this one seems okay the gasket isn't in bad shape so I'm just gonna get a star driver and take this off here and uh, we'll continue on with cleaning it alrighty so I'm just going to remove the uh, float pin here, remove the float pin, and we'll take the float out. There is a spring here, got to be careful for. There's our needle right there. So we can clean this up. Don't want to lose the spring. Now typically when the needle is just metal, some of them have rubber tip. If it doesn't have a rubber tip, there's definitely a, uh, there's a rubber seal in there, inside of this hole. And it looks okay from here. It's typically uh, white is the color. Yeah, that's typically white in there. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna use a wire. I'm just gonna clean out pretty much every hole I can find here 
we're going to clean it out. We're going to blow it out with some uh, carb cleaner. Now I'm looking inside and I can see the wire coming up through the hole, so that's good. And this is actually a jet here. You're going to see a hole right here, so we want to make sure that's clear. And then you've got a hole in here. Just want to make sure all that's clear. I mean, overall, it doesn't look bad at all. I don't think I even need to take this. I'm not going to take this off. There's really no point in it. Might end up ruining the gasket there. I can spray in there with this on here, so it's not a big deal. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray... Spray inside the emulsion tube here. Make sure it's flowing out. And then uh, what I'm going to do is just take this outside because I don't want to damage the camera and have the spray. I'm just going to take it out and just do what I was doing. Spray through there again, then I'll wipe it all down and uh, put it back together, you know, clean up the outside, put it back together, and that's one uh, more thing that we've gone through. And all we have to do is check the spark, make sure there's spark, there's definitely compression. So we've got all the elements necessary for this to run. So I'm really not worried about it. Uh, everything's looking good so far. All right, so I continued uh, spraying it all out. Everything's cleaned up on the inside. So we're going to just reverse the process. We're going to go ahead and take the float here. Just slide the needle in there. Just like that. And try to drop it in here. Sometimes it's tricky. Because it wants to come out of there. The struggle is real. that looks good now the other challenge we have is the spring so we have to put the spring on first before we can put the pin back in because the pin goes through the spring it actually probably might be easier if I remove this gasket Looks like it came off again. See how much fun this is? All right, let's try to situate this spring here. I can get my pen ready.
All right. So it took a few minutes of struggling to get this thing in here. But we have the spring all in there. The float moves up and down. I don't see any issues there. One test you can do is just blow in here. And when the float is down like this, there shouldn't be any air going through it. And then lift up on it and you should hear your air going through. So you know that it's sealing properly. Um, so that's the operation of the carburetor anyway. Like I said, gaskets look like they're in good shape. I might take a wire brush and just clean the outside off a little, but other than that, it's good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and throw the bowl back on here. I'm just gonna give one last inspection. Just to make sure everything looks good in there. And it does, so let's just put the bowl on now. Alright, so what I like to do is I just like to put a little, I'm using just a silicone spray here. I'm just going to put a little bit on this gasket here and lubricate it a little bit before I put this bowl on. Just helps it make, make it last a little longer, you know? So we'll put the gasket on. We'll make sure our pin is straight. Everything's functioning right. And the way the bowl is going to go on is the flat part here that says Tecumseh products. The flatter part is going to go where this hinge is. Just like that. I'm going to press it on, then I'm going to go and take my uh, bolt, put it in there. Now I don't have to get crazy with this and over tighten it, but I do want it snug. Okay, that's it. So we're ready to put it back on the machine. Uh, and so let's get to that part. All right, so it's October 3rd, 2024, and thanks guys for joining me uh, for this resurrection. We'll call it a resurrection because it is Halloween time. I did put the carburetor back on, and we did cut the, the rope there uh, just so it's out of the way of because it was running through this here and it's just kind of hanging kind of pain so i just removed it um, we put gas in it we have uh, the two cycle mix and it's a gallon of gas i mixed in a container so it's 2.6 ounces of two cycle oil to a gallon of gas we did that there's no leaks anywhere fuel lines hooked up uh, so we're going to give it a run here and uh, see what we get from it So she's running pretty darn good. Uh, the smoke is normal. You're going to get that obviously with a two cycle because you're mixing the oil with the gas. And that's just how it's going to be. You know, it shouldn't be super smoky. A lot of that started to taper off as it was running. Uh, but overall it's running really good. Um, we did try the starter and that's not working. Here's the button there for the starter. And we tried it and it's just not working at all. I don't hear any humming. 
uh, from the starter motor. So I think what we're going to do now, because it's nice to have that as a backup, because the way this engine is, it, you'd have to remove the engine to get to the recoil. If you could see how tight, you could see how tight that recoil is, how close it is to the tank, and there's a bracket there. Uh, so that would definitely have to. Uh, it would take some work. There's no question about it. All right, so here we have the starter, Tecumseh starter, right here. And we've got two bolts on the top and one on the bottom. I think it's probably gonna be a 10 millimeter, but we're gonna go ahead and remove that. And then we'll remove the uh, switch from the panel and we'll get it in on the workbench uh, and do some tests on it. You know, it could be that it was it's just burned out. A lot of times what people do is if it doesn't start, they keep holding the button down and it burns out the motor and hopefully that's not the case here maybe we just clean it up with some electrical cleaner we might be good with it but let's get it off the machine and take a look all right so it's 10 millimeter we got two on the top one on the bottom it looks like and we also have this clamp that's holding the cable that goes to the control panel for the switch so we're going to take this off first There's our starter. All right, quarter inch deep socket on a driver. And we're just going to take these out of here. So there we have it. Uh, we have it removed. We're going to take it in on the workbench there in my uh, office and uh, open her up. You really didn't need the deep socket. That's just what I had. So don't think you need the deep socket for that. It's just uh, some screws. Very easy to take out. Um, but let's get on with the show and get in there and take this thing apart. All right. So now that we have the motor out, take the switch off now I did already just trim some of the wire off here and you notice when I did it I didn't do them side by side I did this one a little bit lower just so when I tape it back together or I'll shrink wrap it um, shrink tubing that they're not there's no chance of the, them grounding out against each other but first I'm going to test the switch and I'm just going to take I have my tester here set to continuity. We touch these two together. So when we have a connection, it should beep and that should go to zero. Right there. So I'll go ahead and just put it on the black lead here on the plug. This is where the plug would come in. Then I'll put the other on the lead here, on one of the leads of the tester. Then I'll take the other lead and touch it to this black wire that I stripped off a little bit. And I'll press the switch and see what happens here. So you can see the switch is good. So I'm getting a good connection through the switch, so that's good. The switch is good. One less thing we have to worry about. So now, we got to get inside this motor here and see what's going on. Now it is uh, from 1997, the snowblower, so it's it could just be that it wasn't used enough or that it was, like I said, Sometimes people hold the button down too long if it's not starting and it'll burn the motor out. 
the first thing we're going to have to do is remove this clip on the end here so we can take this gear off. So I'm going to take the clip off here. All right, so I was able to get it off just spraying a little uh, penetrating oil on it. And there is the clip. Little clip there. We have a washer. We have this big washer. We have this rubber bushing here. We have the gear. A spring. There's this white spacer here. And then there's a metal spacer. And then there is another clip here that we're going to have to get off. I believe I can pry that off without it going flying. Oh. There's the other clip here. Now we can move ahead and we're going to take a 5 16 and take these long bolts out. There's two of them. And on the other side we have these nuts here. So we're just going to take these off. we can see something obvious that's going on inside of here there's one There's our second one, our bracket, and our other bracket. So now let's pull this thing open and see what's, uh, if we can see anything obvious. Maybe it's just rusty and we can clean it up. That's what I'm hoping. There's the cap there. There's a lot of debris in there. See all the debris? That's crazy. There's a lot of debris in there. So here's our end cap here. This one has two brushes here. You can see the one brush here, the other brush here. And I'm not sure where all that debris came from. It's hard to say what that is. It doesn't look like uh, shavings from the brushes. I mean, the brushes are good here. They're spring-loaded. I mean, the wiring doesn't look bad. So let's pull this out of here. I mean, it is dirty in there. It 
definitely got some dirt in there. I don't know if you can see the windings. See the windings in there? So there's still a lot of meat on these brushes here. But we can go ahead and uh, clean this up. Get all this debris out of here. I don't know if something was living in here or... But something like that could definitely keep it from working. So let's take a look at this commutator here. It's not, it's not really that damaged here. That's where the brushes touch it. It's definitely dirty. I think what we're going to try to do here is I'm going to take it outside only because I don't want to spray this electrical cleaner in here and see if we can't uh, get an old t-shirt and we'll clean up these contacts here. Here's what I'm going to use right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to clean the inside, spray it, clean the inside up. I don't really smell I mean, it doesn't really smell burned at all I don't see any breaks in any of the contacts here but we can test that we'll test the continuity between the uh, these connections here and here. First, let me get this cleaned up and uh, I'll come back when it's nice and clean. All right, so we cleaned up the commutator. You can see how clean. You can now see that shiny. It's in good shape. I don't see any issues. There is a crack here in the it looks like a sealant or something that they put on there. But all we can do is just uh, put her back together and give her a try. But what we're going to do first is just take these brushes. We're going to make sure there's continuity between the wire here after the switch and these brushes here. Now, a lot of them have four brushes. This one only has two. It's a relatively small motor. Uh, but there's springs in these brushes and as they wear down, it's kind of like flint, they advance forward, uh, touching this right here as it spins. So I really don't see any other issue here. Um, there's really no reason this shouldn't work unless there's something wrong with the windings, but I didn't smell any burning. So let's continue here. We're going to put it on continuity again. I'm going to go ahead and hook one of my leads up to the white wire from the power. And I'm going to put it on one of the leads on my tester. And then I'll just take my other lead from the tester and touch. So you can hear that. There's continuity here. I'm actually touching the, one of the brushes here. So there's voltage there. Now let's go ahead and switch this to the black wire. And we'll do the same thing. So you can see that. There's continuity there. So we're definitely getting power. The switch is good. Uh, all I can think is that maybe this debris in there and the, the fact that this was filthy, needed to be cleaned up. We cleaned the inside. Uh, so let's uh, go ahead and start putting it back together. All right, before I start putting it back together, I'm just going to drop a tiny bit of oil into these springs here where these brushes are. So I did that. Then I put a little white lithium grease on the end cap here. That's where this is going to go in and, uh, and spin. 
So I took care of that. I'm going to put this in. This can be kind of tricky. You have to slide it back in. And since the brushes are spring loaded, we're going to have to just take our finger and peel it, peel one of them back, peel the other one back. And just now you can see it's it's gone back in there and the brushes are in contact with it. So now we can take our end cap here. Make sure the wires are situated properly. That they're out of the way. And we'll get this. There's a slot in the side of it where the power cord's going. Okay, so let's start putting this thing back together. And I did put some grease here. And we have to put the mounting bracket on first. And there are slots in on this that it'll fit right in there. And our screw holes line up. So then we have to take this big clamp here. We've got to put that on there. Right, so that's on there then we have to put this metal it's kind of a cup washer and the cup side is going to go down and I'm just going to put a little tiny bit of oil there so this cup side was going to go down get this back in place here so the cup sides gonna go down then we have this plastic white spacer and one sides kind of rounded one sides open so we're gonna put this side open because the spring it's going to go in and kind of sit inside that that white cup there and now we have our gear that's going to go on there and we have this rubber kind of washer and that kind of fits fits right on top of this gear here just like that then we're going to have the the metal washer here and that has kind of a lip on the bottom that's going to fit right in here and it kind of it'll screw in there you see how it screws in there so we have that and then we have our plastic washer And then we have the other C-clip right here. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there. So that's what we should have. That's normal operation right there. Because once power is applied, this should come in. It's going to make contact with the flywheel. And then it should snap back. So all that's functioning properly. It's good enough for now till we get the other one in. So we'll go ahead and put the other one in.
tighten that up. Make sure it's snug. That's definitely turning well. You can see it's Got it all tightened up. So there's only one less one thing left to do now. And that's to try it. So what do you guys think? It's gonna work? Well, we're gonna find out. Alright, so the motor unfortunately did not work. I applied some power to it. But uh, I took it apart again, and I'm taking a look at this commutator. And I've noticed here at the end, it's very hard to see it. Right here, there's a copper wire that's broken here. And it's kind of dark there. I'll try to get you in on the uh, magnifying right, lens, and we'll take a look at it. Magnifying lens here. I don't know if you can see that that wire right there, the copper. See how it's broken? It's supposed to connect. There's a connection to each one of those those blocks there going around and that wire is not connected. So what we're going to try to do is one more shot I'm going to take my soldering iron, get a piece of copper wire, I'm going to join those two wires together. And then we'll put it back together and see if that does anything. Other than that, if it doesn't work, it's really not worth fixing. Um, but uh, we're going to give it a shot before we uh, deem this thing to be unusable. So stick around. Alright, I don't know if you guys can see that right here. I put some solder and there was a little piece of the wire here and there was a wire here so I joined them together. It's not the neatest job in the world but I needed to pile it on there to keep it uh, on there. Now I am getting continuity from this little point here to the wire over here now. So whether or not that was a problem and whether or not it's going to work who knows, but it's worth a shot. So let's put it back together and uh, see if it works. All right, so we have the motor here on the bench. Put it all back together. And we're going to give it a shot here. We have the switch. So I'm just going to activate the switch. All right. So that appears to be all it was with that little tiny wire that was there. Um, I'm going to put the gears back on and uh, I'll do some more testing on it before I mount it back in the machine. But I'll put the gears back on, uh, mount it back in the machine and see if it'll start the machine. But I'm happy with it. Got lucky on this one. It was very hard to notice that little winding with the tiny little copper wire in there. Uh, but hopefully it'll last. and. Uh, Let's continue with what we're doing.
So I want you all to join me in this eulogy for the starter motor. Unfortunately, it wasn't powerful enough to turn the engine over. It's just old and tired. And we're just going to have to live without it. That's a very sad day. But this starter motor led a good life and was electrifying. It provided many starts and many happy, snowy days. But now we must say goodbye to Mr. Starter Motor as we remember it for the rest of our lives and we cherish it for what it was. Born in 1997, this motor will live on as a legend and it will be remembered always. Peace and love to you, Motor.